Welcome back to the Movie Man. Today I will show you a 2012 adventure drama film, Life of Pi. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie starts in a zoo in Pondicherry, India. A boy by the name of Pissing Molita Patel is being taught how to swim by his uncle. Molita was named after a French swimming pool with water so clean one could make morning tea with it. The father wanted him to have a pure spirit like the pool but instead, the name became a nightmare for him. He was constantly mocked and bullied in school due to the close resemblance of pissing and pissing, and by the age of 11, he had had enough of this. When they reopened school after the holidays, pissing was prepared. Class after class, he would walk to the front and explain the mathematical formula by he did this every lesson and at the last class of the day, Pissine went all in. He wrote the full version of Pi from the top of his head as the whole school watched. No one could believe it as this could only be done by a genius. The whole school cheered for him and from then onwards, his nickname changed from Pissine to Pi. Pi was born a Hindu and was introduced to the god Krishna at a very young age by his mother. A god so powerful that he had the entire universe in his mouth but his fate would have it. Bai bumped into Christianity by accident in his village home. He truly loved the story of God humbling himself to a mere human being and dying for the people's sins. So he accepted Christ into his life and became a Christian but that was not the end as Pi was walking down an alleyway. He was attracted by the beautiful call to prayer from a mosque and just like that he became a Muslim but instead of believing in one faith, Pai practiced and followed all the three religions. He was born a Hindu but he felt God's love in Christianity, he enjoyed the feeling of serenity and brotherhood provided by Islam. His father who was himself an atheist did not like this. He could tolerate following one religion but three. Pai was just brainwashed. Pai was also very curious and wanted to understand everything including animals. Against his father's rules, he sneaked into the tiger's enclosure as he wanted to see the beast up close. He takes a piece of meat and opens the door allowing the magnificent cat to walk in. He stretches his arm forward while looking deep into the eyes of the beast. As it slowly walked towards him but when the tiger gets close enough his father ran inside and pulled him away and the tiger also took off running. His father was very furious as according to him the boy was about to lose his arm but Pai is very adamant and swears it was not going to harm him. He said he could see its pure soul deep in its eyes. His father warns him that what he saw was just his reflection and nothing else as the tiger only saw him as food but not as a friend. To teach the boy a lesson, he orders a goat to be tied where the boy was and the tiger is called in again and the tiger folded the goat in half through the narrow metal cage and drags it inside like it was nothing. Years passed and Pi became bigger. Unfortunately, the financial situation at the zoo was not good. His father struggled to keep it alive but finally reached his breaking point so he wanted to close the zoo down and sell the animals in Canada where they would also relocate. Pai did not like this idea but there was nothing he could do so the family together with their animals boarded a ship and set sail for their new lives. All this is being narrated by a 60-year-old Pai to a Canadian writer as something so tragic happened that it changed the course of the life of Pai and his entire family. It was four days out of Manila Philippines above the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. The winds were strong and the waves were even bigger but their ship pushed on high and his family was sleeping in their quarters. He woke up and tapped his brother on the shoulder as he wanted to go and see the angry ocean outside. His brother refused but the curious Pai marched on alone. When Pai opened the door he is almost sucked out by the strong winds. He walks outside as it rained heavily and climbs higher for a better view. The storm rocked the ship side to side and the ocean seemed to inflate and deflate. Pai was so happy and he danced around thanking the gods for this beautiful experience but suddenly the alarm started going off. When Pai looked at the deck below he could not believe it two men are swept by a huge wave and they disappeared into the dark water. He quickly realized the gravity of the situation and ran back inside. When he made a turn leading to their floor. He found the corridors completely submerged in water. Pai drove in and tried to swim to get to his family but the pressure was too much. 
He swam back outside to try and get some help. The animals had escaped from their cages and were running around on the top deck. Bai walked up to several men trying to lower a lifeboat into the water and asked for help but instead, he is grabbed and thrown into the lifeboat. A panicked zebra jumped into the lifeboat breaking the ropes and the boat fell into the ocean. The boat is swayed around violently by the waves but Pai holds on for dear life. When it finally stopped Pai tried to wave while blowing a whistle but the ship disappeared in front of his eyes. He saw something struggling to stay afloat so he threw a floater towards it and pulled. When it finally got closer it was the tiger I tried to push it away but a small wave knocked it and it held onto the boat. He hurriedly jumped into the water where several sharks were swimming and when he looked closer he saw the ship was already fully submerged but the lights were still on. The ship was sinking to the bottom slowly with his entire family still on board. Pai quickly swam back up to the surface and climbed back on board. He holds onto the bowsprit looking and crying out for his family as he watched the ship slowly sink to the bottom. The next day, Pai was still holding onto the bowsprit. He climbed into the boat and started pouring out the water that had managed to enter but suddenly a hyena emerged from under the boat cover and started attacking him. He quickly ran back to his safe spot and held onto the bow spirit. From a distance, an orangutan appeared floating on some bananas. When it got close enough, Pai helped it by pulling the poor animal on board. It looked very scared and very hopeless. He stood up and started screaming calling out in case a human being had also survived. The noise woke up the hyena which was now very hungry. When night came the hyena could not take it anymore. It turned its attention towards the zebra and attacked the poor animal killing and eating it. Hours passed and Pai was too tired to keep holding onto the bow spirit. He made a makeshift raft but before he could drop it in the water, the hyena appeared again. This time it turned its attention toward the orangutan. It bit the poor animal on the neck killing it. Bai got very angry and started shouting ready to fight and kill it but in that commotion, the tiger jumped from beneath the boat cover and landed on the hyena and killed it. Pai quickly dropped his raft in the water and jumped after it to escape from this beast. Hours passed and Bai got very hungry. He opened the boat cover and found canned foods in the storage compartments and he immediately started to devour them. He also found a rat which made noise as it walked around. This alarmed the tiger and it got out from under the cover. It tried to jump on by but its nails pierced through the cover and got constantly stuck making it unable to walk on it. Pai quickly takes the rat and throws it straight into the tiger's mouth. He used this chance to escape back into the water but the tiger wanted more. It came running towards him but luckily for him, it was afraid of falling into the ocean so it retreated. The poor boy was so afraid that he even threw up. Days turned into nights and nights turned into days and Pi was still floating in the middle of nowhere. So far the small amount of water between them had managed to keep the tiger from turning him into a meal. Though the sun's reflection on the ocean's surface was so beautiful, Pi could not enjoy it. He could only sit on the small raft as any time he tried to touch the boat the tiger was there ready to kill him. He tried to write rescue notes and throw them in random directions but it only landed a few meters from him. Despite believing in three different religions, Pai felt alone as none of the gods he prayed to felt present. He found a survival book detailing what to do to increase the chances of survival and he started to study and follow it. Like and subscribe may look simple for you, but for us it's very valuable, please like, subscribe and press the bell icon for the latest notifications. Thank you for your support. When it rained he used a bucket to trap rainwater for drinking. Bai also started to count and record the days to keep his mind busy and so far he was 11 days in. Slowly Pai started to adapt and manage the difficult situations. He used a sea anchor to point the boat into the waves to reduce the effects of seasickness. Bai also tries to establish dominance in a territory on the boat but his plans failed very quickly. For this entire period, the tiger had not eaten anything. The animal was getting hungry and Pai knew the little amount of water between them could not stop this powerful beast from reaching him, so he had to find a way to fish and feed the carnivore and before long his nightmare became a reality. The tiger jumped into the ocean trying to catch some fish swimming close by but when it was unable, 
it turned its attention to Pi and started to swim towards him. The situation went from zero to a hundred very quickly. He pulled the ropes and jumped on the boat with only seconds to spare. He also pulled his raft on the boat leaving the tiger stranded and unable to climb back up. Pi picked up an axe and this was his chance to finish the deadly predator once and for all. He tried to hit it on the head but he could not. It was just not in him to kill. The same as in his childhood he saw something in its eyes and felt pity for it and he had to save it. Pi used the next several hours to build a ladder for the tiger who was still hanging on and when night reached, he dropped the ladder into the ocean and the tired tiger and climbed back on board. The next day, Pi was prepared, he did not want a repeat of the earlier occurrence that he improvised to catch some fish. He placed a net under his raft in time for the big fish swimming nearby and when it entered his trap he quickly pulled it out of the water. The fish was still struggling so he hit it several times with the head of the axe killing it. He became emotional and even shed tears as this was his first time killing a living being. He then took the entire fish and threw it inside the lifeboat and finally the tiger had its first meal since the accident. Days went on and sometimes the ocean was a bit rough at other times it was very still calm and beautiful. One night the ocean waters glowed so beautifully and one could see the fish as they swam deep in the water. When Pi looked carefully he saw something big swimming upwards towards him but before he could do anything a gigantic whale jumped several meters into the air and when it fell back Pi plus his rafter quickly submerged. He had stupidly brought all the ration with him in the raft and just like that all his food sunk to the bottom. Pi had now survived for 38 days alone in the ocean but one day something unusual happened a fish jumped from nowhere and hit him in the face and before long several hundred if not thousands of fish came flying toward them. Some flew past but some hit him and fell inside a big fish jumped out of the water and landed in the boat. There was no way Pi could let the tiger have this once so he took a stick and the two started to fight. He stuck it inside the tiger's mouth and it retreated. He quickly pulled the fish away from the tiger which had started eating the fish on the floor of the boat. Up to that moment in his life Pi had lived as a vegetarian but hunger made him do something he never thought he could do. He took a huge bite from the fish to satisfy his hunger. P had had enough he could not continue to risk his life every time he set foot inside the boat so it was time to tame the beast and if they were going to live together they needed some rules in personal territories. Using a whistle and a stick and some pieces of meat he approached the beast. He would point at a place blow the whistle and throw some meat there and the tiger would eat them. He repeated this several times and the tiger slowly but surely learned and started to obey his commands. After 88 days Bai had converted the raft into a very comfortable living space and even fitted a shade. In times like this he remembered that both he and the tiger had the same little experience with the world. They were both brought up in the same zoo by the same master and they both lost everything in the same way on the same day. He knew that without the tiger he would have died by now. His fear of him kept him alert and tending to his needs gave him a purpose. One day beyond some swimming dolphins Bai saw a cargo ship. He quickly took his flare gun and shot up in the air trying to alert it to help them. Hours passed and Pai tried everything but the ship just went further and further and when night came it had fully disappeared beyond the earth's curvature leaving Pai standing hopelessly. In the dark so much time had passed that the tiger had not only turned into his friend. It was his entire world. Pi tried to keep himself busy by documenting his life in a book but after a while, the book got filled up and the pencil got finished. As Pi was resting on the boat he saw a big storm approaching. He hurriedly started to pack his things but it caught up before he finished. He quickly tied a rope around his waist to avoid drowning. Lightning struck the ocean and illuminated the entire waters around Pi. The waves were big and strong and kept rocking the boat side to side. It was constantly submerged but had managed to emerge back up again and again. The waves grew bigger and lightning shine even brighter. Somehow Pi was happy as according to him the place was beautiful but the tiger was filled with fear. The rope that tied his raft to the boat snapped and Pi could only watch the raft as it went further and further away from him. The tiger was helplessly dragged from side to side by the water that had sipped in the lifeboat and when the storm eventually passed Pi was left with nothing. 
the raft his fishing net his book and even hope were gone, the boat floated on the ocean from day to night with no sign of help and for the first time, by drank the seawater. He slowly walked towards the tiger and poured some water in its mouth to try and quench its thirst. His hair had grown long and shaggy and his skin had turned black due to sunburn. Pai stretched his hand and touched the tiger's head to pet it. He sat next to it and lifted its head and placed it on his thighs. He looked into the sky as tears dripped down his face and officially let go. He was now ready to die and reunite with his family in the next life. The tiger had grown so weak that it could hardly move. When Pai opened his eyes he was resting under some shade. There was a beautiful whistle of the wind as it passed through leaves and tree branches. The boat was resting on a shore. Pai jumped from the boat and immediately started to eat fruits and weeds on the shores. He then proceeded inwards to check for any kind of human life form to get help. When he went deep enough he found the inhabitants. The island was covered by thousands of meerkats. He walked to the center where he found pools of fresh water. He jumped inside and started swimming and drinking the water. This was paradise to the tiger as there was food all over. Although he was the only human on the island, Pai felt at home but when evening came something strange happened. All the meerkats ran from the fields and retreated into the forest. The pools of water that were previously occupied with fresh clean water suddenly turned and were filled with dead fish floating on the surface. Pai plucked a fruit hanging above him and when he looked inside, it had a tooth, a human tooth. Pai immediately realized something, the island was carnivorous, and some kind of chemical process happened and turned the waters in the pools into acid. Hence the meerkat escaped to the trees and the tiger ran back into the lifeboat. All that the island gave by the day it took away by night. He knew that another human must have found himself stranded on the island and when he died. He was consumed by the island and only his tooth remained. Pai did not want to end up lost and forgotten like him, so Pai made up his mind. He spent the next day preparing. He filled his storage with fresh water and seaweed. He stuffed as many meerkats as he could for the tiger. When he called out for his fierce companion, the tiger came running and they set sail back into the open ocean. By the time they reached the Mexican shores, all his strength was gone and he was so weak. He was afraid of letting go of the boat as he thought that the few feet of water would drown him. He fell on the warm and soft sand and could hardly move anymore. The tiger jumped from the boat onto the shores. It was so thin and weak that it struggled to walk. It stretched and walked along the shores but at the edge of the jungle, it stopped. Pai lifted his head thinking that it would at least look behind one last time and bring their relationship to an end. In some way but the tiger just continued and disappeared into the jungle. When he was later found by some local men, Pai cried like a child. He cried because the tiger left him so unceremoniously. After all they had been through together, it broke his heart. His father was right all along. The tiger never saw him as a friend. When he looked into its eyes, it was his reflection staring back at him and nothing else. Pai is rescued and brought to a hospital. Insurance agents for the Japanese freighter company interview him, but do not believe his story and ask what happened, specifically inquiring why the ship sank. He tells the different story, in which the animals are replaced by humans, his mother for the orangutan, an amiable sailor for the zebra and the ship's brutish cook for the hyena. The cook kills the sailor and feeds on his flesh. He then kills Pai's mother, after which Pai kills him and uses his remains as food and fish bait. The insurance agents are dissatisfied with this story but leave without questioning Pai further. When the writer recognizes the parallels between the two stories, Pai says that it does not matter which story is true because his family died either way and neither story provided the explanation the insurance company wanted. He asks which story the author prefers, and the author chooses the first, to which Pi replies, and so it goes with God. Glancing at a copy of the insurance report, the writer reads that Pi survived his adventure in the company of an adult Bengal tiger. That was all of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.